Okay, so we're going to start chapter 10 uh, today. Chapter 10 is a, is, is a long chapter. We're going to cover quite a lot of concepts in this chapter. So the agenda for this chapter, as you can see, uh, we'll start off by uh, talking about what are the differences between an asset and an expense. Uh, then we'll go uh, uh, and talk about tangible versus intangible assets. Uh, we will also talk about long-term uh, asset costs for uh, land, buildings, and equipment. Um, and amortization. Amortization is key as far as long-term assets are concerned. So for tangible and, uh, and intangible assets, we will also talk about uh, disposal of long-term assets. What happens, how do you do deal with the, the fact that you have to sell uh, or get rid of long-term assets. We will talk about financial statement presentation of assets and of course uh, the goodwill asset. The goodwill asset is one of the intangible assets which we will focus on. So, um, just briefly to understand what are the differences between an, an asset and an expense. First of all, an asset is a balance sheet item, an expense is an income statement item. What happens is, uh, depending on objectives of people, some people would want to call their assets an expense. Because what will happen is, if you uh, have a high expense, your net income goes down. Um, so uh, if, you, if your objective was to pay less tax, you would like your net income to go down, so people would want to call assets their expenses. Uh, the other way, uh, some people would like their expenses to be called assets because expenses, uh, if expenses are decreased, their net incomes go uh, up, and what happens is uh, their, uh, the perception of their company goes up, the value of the company goes up. So. Uh, there, is, there are rules to differentiate between asset and expenses and you must follow them. It is not up to the individual as per se as to where this one particular item falls. They've got to look at the definitions of an asset and an expense. So an asset is usually a one-time purchase. Um, it can be additions and improvements uh, incurred to increase the efficiency or expected life of an asset. Uh, it is usually material in amount and occurs infrequently uh, and they are usually called expenditures. Expenses on the other hand are recurring in nature. They are ordinary repairs to maintain the operating efficiency of an asset. See the key word differences uh, as far as assets are concerned. They increase the, uh, the efficiency or life and expenses maintain this efficiency or life. Uh, and expenses are usually called expenses uh, rather than expenditures. So we already know that an asset is, uh, is an item that, uh, that uh, has future economic value. An expense is of course something that you are looking to uh, maintain that asset for. Uh, if it is an asset, what you do is, the general entry is, is quite simple, you debit the asset and you credit cash or accounts payable, whichever method you use to pay. And if it is an expense, you debit the expense and you credit cash or accounts payable. So the difference here is really key. You must understand that uh, an asset is for uh, increasing the value of the, the item that you have. An expense basically maintains that value. So an example, if you had a car and you changed, um, uh, you got an oil change, that would be an expense. However, if you changed uh, the engine of the car, that would be an asset because now you, your efficiency in life of the car has increased. There can be two types of assets. You can have tangibles and intangibles. Uh, of course, tangible assets are those that you can touch and feel like furniture, buildings, land. Intangibles are those that do not have any physical substance. You cannot touch and feel them. Uh, and, but they are extremely important to the life of a, of a company and they can be, I think some of the examples are patents, copyrights, goodwill, trademarks and we'll talk about those type of assets as well. Some of the examples for um, the uh, tangible assets are property, plan and equipment. You will often see on balance sheets of companies uh, instead of them listing furniture office furniture, manufacturing furniture, um, computers, uh, stuff like that, 
machinery. What you'll do, what they'll do is they'll lump all of them together and they will call it property, plant, and equipment. And they will have one number for all of that on the balance sheet. Then in the notes section, they will describe how this PPE uh, is calculated. So they will then uh, differentiate or, or uh, categorize all the assets uh, for PPE. So PPE is really important as far as the name is concerned. And as I mentioned, this is basically a, a, a lump sum amount of pretty much a lot of the assets. Then you will also have land as a special asset. Land is special on its own because of one fact, uh, and that fact is that it cannot be amortized. And we'll talk about amortization tomorrow. Uh, buildings are another example. Natural resources are another example of tangible assets. So mining companies, uh, fishing companies, lumber companies, a lot of these uh, <coughs> companies would have natural resources as their asset, as probably their biggest asset. Oil companies, uh, you know, th that's pretty much uh, uh, a lot of companies that would have natural resources. So how do you determine the cost of a long-term asset? So when you are buying an asset, determine first of all if it is for short-term or long-term. Okay? So you've got to differentiate between those two. Uh, however, under IFRS, you don't really have to think about this differentiation as much. Oh, one thing I forgot between uh, when we were talking about assets um, was that uh, we're, we're focusing on long-term assets here. Um, as opposed to short-term assets, which were cash, accounts receivable, which were you know the focus in the last couple of chapters, uh, and also the fact that uh, we're not worried about inventory because inventory is an asset which is not really a long-term asset; is a short-term asset. It is something that you buy to sell. So long-term assets are things that you intend to keep that you do not wish to sell um, right away. So uh, coming back to determining how assets are, uh, asset costs are allocated, uh, all assets, all long-term assets are recorded at cost using the cost principle, which means that you must look at uh, the objective price of the uh, uh, asset that you have paid. Cost includes expenditures to purchase the asset and make it ready for its use. Now this is a really uh, solid definition where you need to think about not just the purchase price but also some of the costs that are required to uh, make it ready for its use, which may include freight costs, installation costs, um, and stuff like that. So uh, as an example, if you look at um, uh, the next slide, it says, purchased a machine for $1,000 pay freight cost of $200 and installation of $300. So altogether, it is $1,500. What you're doing here is you're debiting the machine, which is an asset for $1,500, and debiting cash or AP for $1,500. So you see uh, that um, that's how those costs are added. And you can look at example two for a trade-in. Now, I'm, I'm going to focus on land as an asset. Land is, as I mentioned, is a special asset. It cannot be amortized. Uh, however, it also has um, uh, other things that you must include in its cost, other than you know items such as installation of freight costs, which apply to other assets than land. Land would not have installation costs. It would have other costs, such as closing costs, uh, for, uh, for example, legal and title fees. So all of those costs are part of purchase price. They are not your expenses. Any legal fees that you pay when you purchase land, that is part of your um, um, asset cost. Uh, then you would have accrued property taxes and other liens. So if there were property taxes that the previous owner did not pay and you have to pay them, those are part of your purchase price. All costs incurred in making it ready for its intended use. If you would like the land to become a parking lot, a building, um, a ground, something, you may need to level the land, you may need to uh, take out the trees, you may need to uh, cement some part of it, pave some part of it. All of those are part of the long-term asset cost. 
Then of course you've got land improvements as well, such as fencing, landscaping, and so on. So you've got to think about those costs as far as long as far as land is concerned. Land, as I mentioned, is a is one of those assets that you need to really think about when you purchase them, and you need to include a lot of those prices, so a lot of those costs. So as an example, I've given you a list of all those costs that are part of uh, purchasing a land, uh, purchasing a piece of land. Notice that uh, purchase price is and so on and all of those costs are uh, listed as this example. A um, couple of these costs are not part of the purchase price and those would be the last two items, the accounting fee and the business consulting fee. Those are expenses, the rest are cost. So if you debit land, credit cash or AP, you would in, uh, add all the rest of the costs which were described earlier. Uh, as far as buildings and equipments are concerned, you need to think about them uh, on, on their own as well. For a cost of building, will include all expenditures you paid to purchase a building or to construct a building. So if you were to construct something um, on the piece of land, you would have to pay all the costs, uh, include all the costs in the purchase price. If you are purchasing, Purchase price, legal fees, closing costs, and renovation costs are part of the asset cost. If you are constructing, all the costs that are listed here uh, on the slide are part of the purchase price. For equipment, on the other side of the slide, uh, for equipment, it will be purchase price, freight charges, insurance paid by the purchaser, assembling costs, installation fees, testing fees, all of those costs are part of the asset cost and they're not expenses. So you've got to be mindful of how to differentiate between costs for all those for all these assets. So we've talked about land, buildings, equipment uh, in detail and uh, we've, we've looked at what kind of costs uh, they would be included, uh, what kind of expenses would be included in the, in the uh, cost of the asset uh, versus the expenses for that year. So I'll continue with amortization starting tomorrow. Hope you guys are uh, understanding the differences between land, buildings, and equipment especially. Thank you.